they weren't sure how the cancer or the chemotherapy would be affecting my being able to conceive. At that time, you know, 16, I wasn't thinking about kids. It was kind of like something in the back of my mind. You don't really want to think about it, but you're forced to. The option to not have kids just kind of isn't an option. There wasn't a risk to me that would be worth more than at least trying. I'm Dr. Kat Lin at University of Washington in Seattle. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist and we help patients when they want to get pregnant. We work closely with your cancer doctors to help take care of you because cancer treatments can affect your periods. For example, the doctors at Seattle Children's and Seattle Cancer Care Alliance often send their patients to us at University of Washington to help answer questions about their reproduction. Now, one of our team members, Stephanie, will help explain what happens to your periods after cancer treatments and what we can do to help you be able to have children in the future. When we talk about pregnancy, an important part is a woman's fertility, which is her ability to have children someday. The timing is very important, and a woman is most fertile around the time when she ovulates. Ovulation is when a single egg matures in the woman's ovary and is released into her fallopian tube. This happens about once a month. If the egg is fertilized by a sperm cell, it becomes an embryo. The embryo then travels through the fallopian tube and implants into the uterus and begins to grow. At birth, the ovaries will each have about a million eggs. This is the most that they will ever have. The number of eggs that a woman has is called the ovarian reserve. Your body does not make any new eggs. Once a month, you release an egg, which is called ovulation. Your doctor can measure your ovarian reserve, and this test can help us find out more about your fertility. Cancer treatments like chemotherapy and radiation can affect your ovarian reserve. Chemotherapy is used to target cells that grow really quickly, like your cancer cells. Your eggs can also be damaged by this chemotherapy. There is a kind of chemotherapy called alkylating agents. These alkylators can cause the ovarian reserve to go down even more, which may make it difficult for you to become pregnant someday. After you finish your cancer treatment, it may take months or even years for your periods to come back. It may take even more time for them to be regular again. There's even a possibility that your periods may not come back at all after you finish your cancer treatment. November 1st, they woke me up at like 7 o'clock in the morning and they said, you don't have a blood clot, you have a mass. And um, so I had a biopsy and found out it was cancer. And I was diagnosed with a Burkitt's lymphoma a um, week before my 17th birthday. That's fun. I, I think I just stopped thinking. I couldn't think past that you have cancer. Looking back, you know, at, at 17, it wasn't what I was thinking. I knew I wanted to have kids young. Um, but looking back, the, the cancer was first and foremost, but I kind of wish I had asked. Chemotherapy basically not only takes the bad cells out, but it kills your good cells too, so I did lose my hair. The thought is really daunting, but I kind of had fun with it. When I knew I was going to lose it, I shaved my hair into a mohawk, because I was like, well, it's going to be gone anyway. I might as well do something crazy. They put me on a drug called Lupron. The idea would be to put my ovaries to sleep so they wouldn't be working so hard when my body was trying to heal itself. So I, I didn't do any other fertility preservation other than that. It just wasn't my priority then, but I, I really do wish that I had put a little more thought into it. 
Right now, there are no medications that can definitely preserve your fertility as you undergo cancer treatments. But medications like Lupron are being studied and someday may help. Right now, there are three treatments that are used to help cancer patients have children in the future. These are called fertility preservation techniques. They're very high tech and they're performed by a doctor called a reproductive endocrinologist or REI for short. The first thing that you can do is in vitro fertilization, which is also called IVF. IVF requires daily hormone shots and these help the ovaries to produce many eggs at the same time. The RAI doctor can then go and remove many eggs at once. It's important for IVF to have many eggs because not every egg can lead to a successful pregnancy. So once the eggs are removed, you can do two different things. The first is to add sperm to the eggs, which leads to fertilization and creates embryos. These embryos can be frozen and so it's called embryo freezing. At a later time, when you're ready to try and become pregnant, you can thaw these embryos and have them implanted into your uterus, hopefully leading to a successful pregnancy. The other thing that you can do is to just freeze the eggs without adding any sperm. This is a good option for people who don't want to choose donated sperm at that time. If you decide later that you want to be pregnant, the eggs can be thawed and sperm can be added to fertilize the eggs and create an embryo. This embryo can then be implanted into your uterus and hopefully lead to a pregnancy. I'm really not taking that bucket away from him. I'm not dumb. I'm not a girl that sits around a lot. Never have been, never will be. All right, you should have I wake up from surgery and they're like, well, it's for sure Hodgkin's lymphoma, you have it. I think it was just mostly shock. I just kind of went from being my little Miss Independent to I didn't want to be alone. I've always been the take care of thing kind of person. It wasn't really anything that I had to think about. I knew that I wanted kids someday and even the chance that it could, not even that it would, which they said with the drugs that I was on that it's very probable. It was weird to be in there with my parents when everybody else is in there with a husband or a significant other, but um, it wasn't too bad. The people at the clinic are really good about working with you. The newest fertility treatment involves taking out part of the ovary and freezing it. Later, the ovary is thawed and surgery is done again to put the ovary back in the body. This is still a very new treatment, but it has resulted in several successful pregnancies. Usually, these procedures are not covered by a patient's insurance. Egg and embryo freezing usually cost about $15,000, but there are programs available to help cancer patients pay for some of it. I don't remember what prompted me to take the test, but I took it and I was staring at it. Positive. He was born December 23rd. Perfect little Christmas present. My cancer was in this area, so I was concerned how he would develop in there. But my doctor didn't really see any concern. That's mommy. Can you say mommy? Mommy. Can mommy have a kiss? Please. Please. Mwah. Oh, give Henry a kiss. Mwah. When I started running, I would run maybe 30 minutes a day. Now it's definitely a way for me to blow off steam. I feel like I have the most energy that I've ever had in my life, cancer or no cancer. And I am addicted to that. <laughs> I want to have kids, but I also want to be healthy for my kids. So I've, I don't think at this point I'm ready for that. But absolutely it's part, it will be part of my future. 
If you have already finished your cancer treatment, there are several things that you can do to check and see how your ovaries are working. The first thing that you can do is check your ovarian reserve. And there are also other tests that can be done to see how well your reproductive system is working. Cancer treatment affects everybody differently. Make sure that you talk to your medical team about how your cancer treatment can affect your ability to have children someday. As a young woman, it's very important to be a part of your treatment team. New things are always being learned about fertility preservation, so don't be afraid to ask questions. It's going to be overwhelming to hear everyone talk about all these different drugs and different things they're going to do to you. Be your own advocate. Think past being sick because there is life after this. Somebody has to take an active role. You have to make the decisions for yourself and you have to live your life as normal. With my seven year anniversary coming up of being diagnosed, this is my early birthday present to myself and it uh, is a bracelet that just says what cancer cannot do. Um, and it says, um, you cannot corrode faith, shatter hope, destroy peace, silence courage, invade the soul, steal eternal life, conquer the spirit, cripple love, kill friendship, or suppress memories. This is my new favorite piece of jewelry. Hmm. That and aside from the bracelet my son got me for my first Mother's Day. Hmm. Remember that your healthcare team is working together to help you answer your questions. If you're concerned about how cancer treatments might change your periods or affect your fertility, ask to see an REI doctor. We hope that you have learned more about your fertility preservation options. These techniques include embryo freezing, egg freezing, and ovarian cryopreservation. Medications are also being studied that may protect your fertility as you receive cancer treatments. This field is always changing. New research is helping to improve fertility preservation techniques every day.